Those that want to come to the choir, please make your way up. We're going to be singing out of the Best Love Songs and Hymns book this morning. We'll start with page 283, and we're just going to kind of sing and intersperse some specials, and we got some other things to do in that, and then uh, before Brother Lee comes to preach, page 283, Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
morning, everybody. Good to see you here. Glad you're able to be here. I see one or two heads nodding. I'm glad to be here. How many are glad you can be here? Amen. Uh, amen. At this time, we ought to be thankful for all the blessings that we have. I'm just looking at my calendar, and, and uh, five days from Christmas. We'll talk about Christmas this morning, Lord willing, a little bit later. Uh, anyone have any announcements? My calendar's blank, except for Christmas later this week. Well, it's good to be with you. Let's bow together, and uh, Brother Ron, would you step to the mic and lead us in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this, this beautiful day, Lord, and we just thank you that we can come to this house and worship you and praise you and learn more about you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for this season. We thank you for the birth of Jesus, Lord, and, and I just thank you for everything he's done in my life, Father, and if there's someone here that in-house or out in the parking lot, Lord, or just anywhere that doesn't know you as their, as their personal Savior, Lord. I just pray that they would, they would do that and that they would, uh, they would just get right with you, Father. Just please be with us and be with this service. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we're glad to see everyone here this morning, and uh, I'm glad to be here. Mickey and I are glad to be here. We missed last Sunday, and we appreciate you folks that called to check on us. And uh, we're, we're doing fine. It's good to be here. We're just going to intersperse some special songs this morning throughout our congregational singing. And uh, Allie's got a special song for us right now. It was not a silent night There was blood on the ground You could hear a woman crying In the alleyway that night On the streets of David's town And the stable was not clean stones were cold little Mary full of grace the tears upon her face had no mother's hand to hold it was a labor of pain it was a cold sky above For the girl on the ground in the dark, every beat of her beautiful heart, it was a labor of love. Noble Joseph by her side, callous hands and weary eyes. There were no midwives to be found. On the streets of David's town In the middle of the night And so he held her and he prayed Shafts of moonlight on his face But the baby in the womb He was the maker of the moon he was the author of the faith that can make a mountain move. It was a labor of pain. It was a cold sky above. But for the girl on the ground in the dark, every beat of her beautiful heart was a labor of love. 
it was not a silent night on the streets of David's town. Thank you, Allie. Well, let's sing about that silent night, page 280, 280 in the uh, Best Love Songs and Hymns songbook, page 280, Silent Night. Say you or Clay had a song. Clay, Clay <laughs> come on up, come on up. I have traveled many moonless nights, cold and weary, with a babe inside, and I wonder what I've done. Holy to carry your son. I am waiting in a 
Let's turn to page 281, page 281. Thanks. 
was falling down that night with no place to rest in sight soon she would bring forth a son the inn was full so instead he was born in a stable bed and there his life had just begun how was she supposed to know as she wrapped him in swaddling clothes that her newborn baby would be a sacrifice? He would run and he would laugh and play, but manhood would bring the day when for the world he would choose to die. Mary wrapped a present to the world On that first Christmas morn When Jesus was born Mary wrapped a present to the world There were no lighted Christmas trees just one bright star for all to see The way to Bethlehem that winter's night Many gifts they brought to him But a greater gift she gave to them For through her son would come eternal life I didn't check with everyone. So, so, I know we got a couple more specials, I think, and we got plenty of time. Does someone else have a, a song this morning? Well, they're awful quiet, Lee, awful uh, quiet. But anyway, well, I, I tell you what, I want to, you guys were playing something earlier. I want you guys to, I, we, we love and appreciate all of our musicians. Amen. And they're going to play a special Christmas song for you now that's become a classic in our time. And I know you'll enjoy the, the band as they play Mary, Did You Know?
lot of churches are without any musicians at all in our area. In fact, it's a quite a problem, it seems, with a lot of churches. That, but I'm so thankful that we are blessed with the, all of our wonderful musicians and some that aren't even here today. And uh, let's give all of our musicians another nice hand. Beautiful star. Beautiful star. Well, we'll sing one more, then Shelly's got a song, and then Brother Lee will be coming uh, to deliver the sermon this morning. But we had to swap out books to get this one in, and I knew if we didn't, we'd be in trouble. Page 288, Beautiful Star of Bethlehem. God's blessing upon the remainder of our service as Sister Shelley gets ready to sing. Father, we come to you again today and thank you, Father, for the privilege of coming before you and to worship you and to praise you in this season, Master, that you've given. We, we'd ask you, Lord, to, in this time of sickness and, and sadness, Father, and in burdens that's people are bearing that you would there is a light that shines a beautiful star of Bethlehem it still shines 
is still here, Father, in our hearts. We'd ask you, Lord, to touch each, each one here this morning and, uh, with a special blessing and a special need that we might have. Someone here, Father, that doesn't know you and the reason that you came and the reason that you died and hung on a cross and there is now even seated at the right hand of God, make an intercessory prayer for those who stand in need. Thank you for all the, the blessings that you've given us in this season and these years, Father, that, that you have allowed us to be before you. Thank you for everything that you do, Lord. Continue to be with us with this service and whatever said and done. We would ask these things, Father, in your name, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Uh, we've separated all the cards in the back, and we're trying to get them to you guys. Um, but if you know maybe your son or daughter isn't here today or nephew or something like that, uh, please come back in the back and grab those if you're going to see them this week. Let me take you back to a time so very long ago Where there lived a young maiden, Mary was her name, so we know She met with a young man Joseph was the one that she would wear. As she looked into his eyes, these were the words that she said. The Messiah's coming. The Messiah's coming. So I must bear the shame For you to know his name The Messiah's coming The Messiah's coming So I must bear all the shame for you to know his precious name. News travel quickly through the town when they heard the story told but mary knew she'd done no wrong for the angel had told her so family turned against her they knew that she would be accused of blasphemy with a broken hearted look she cried oh please just believe the messiah's coming the messiah's coming so i must bear the shame for you to know his name the messiah's coming the messiah's coming so i must bear all the shame for you to know his precious name The Messiah's coming. 
Um, I just wanted to say I had surgery a few weeks ago, and uh, God was with me at every step of the way. I mean, I felt his presence all the way through it, and I'm just so thankful that we have a God to go to, that we have a Savior that is with us all the time. to everybody who had a special song this morning. Appreciate you stepping up and, and participating in the service. Christmas is coming, you know that? It's just about here, as a matter of fact. I've been asked to let you know that there are treat sacks at the front and the back and outside. If you can drive through from the parking lot, you'll find some out there. Uh, they are brown and white. The white ones are for... Uh, uh, the white ones are sugar-free, and the others are not sugar-free. They've got a good load of it in there for you. And, and uh, some of them, I think the, the brown ones have, it wasn't planned this way, but th they, they turned out with a big candy bar in there, and, and you just come a, across one every now and then. And if you are fortunate, and if I overlooked one or two of them, you might get one of those. <laughs> How many remember the scripture that I read last week? What was it, Bonnie? Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter two. It, was that okay for a scripture? <coughs> well, let's do it again, okay? Luke chapter 2. I don't know if I've ever done this before on Christmas, one right after the other, but let's look at, let's look at, look chapter, let's look at Luke chapter 2, please. Luke chapter 2. Verse 1, familiar story. It came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. <clears throat> and the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, <clears throat> You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude <coughs> of the heavenly host, <coughs> praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, <clears throat> Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they'd seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it were wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. It may be a little bit more difficult for some people to celebrate Christmas this year. We talk about how tough a year it's been. Well, actually, it has, has it not? 
still is. There are a lot of our friends, a lot of people who, who are having difficult times that are, that are sick and having other kinds of problems. It's been a year of turmoil politically and medically and physically and any way you, any way you want to look at it. And then there, there are those voices that keep criticizing what we do at Christmas. And they just keep on year after year. And I, 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 don't, I don't know. It, it has to do with people being opposed to the real meaning of Christmas. Um, how many of you say Merry Christmas from time to time? Do you? I do. I do. There are folks that don't like that. Do you ever have anybody frown if you met somebody and say Merry Christmas? They want you to say something else. They don't want you to say Merry Christmas. They're, they're afraid even to say Christmas tree anymore, for goodness sakes. You're supposed to say Happy Holidays, not Merry Christmas. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with saying Happy Holidays, for goodness sakes, but I, I'm here to tell you it's okay to say Merry Christmas, too. If you feel like saying it, just go ahead. I, I won't get bad. I, I, I just really... I just really won't. But there's an attack underway. I, I read I read about a town in one of our rural states, more or less rural states, where you wouldn't expect it, where in the elementary school they're they're singing the song Silent Night in their Christmas program, only they're not singing the words. They're using the melody, the music to Silent Night, but they've rewritten it so they won't offend anybody. And here's what they say, cold in the night, no one in sight, winter winds whirl and bite, how I wish I were happy and warm, safe in my fa with my family out of the storm, and on and on and on, and for goodness sakes, instead of silent night. And, and they decorate their classrooms with what we typically do at Christmas time, I suppose, but they've added the Kwanzaa symbols, and then, then they've added La Befana. How many know what La Bifana is? How many know what, who La Bifana is? Well, that's the Christmas witch. Did you know there was one? Older than Santa Claus, they say in some countries, a, a, a Christmas witch, and, and they've banned the songs and, and anything of, about Christmas. And I want to tell you this morning, I'll get to my sermon in a little bit. The title of my sermon is Back to Bethlehem. Okay? But... But all this that I've been talking about is too much. It's just a way too much. And I get a, we're supposed to be happy at Christmas. I'm going to smile at you, okay? But it's too much. And, and, and some of the stores, some of the stores take down their Christmas signs and they put up happy holidays or winter festival or whatever it is. And some won't let the Salvation Army ring the Christmas bells out in front of their stores anymore. But... They're willing to fill their cash registers on the back of Jesus because actually, folks, Christmas is the observance of his birthday whether we like it or whether we don't. That, that's where it came from. And, and, and don't we exchange gifts because the wise men brought gifts to Jesus? Isn't that where that started? That's my understanding of it. And... and, and and they're offended if we remember any of that. And I can't hardly, I can hardly help getting offended because they're offended at that. Well, you can swear in public like a drunken sailor and say, excuse my French. I think we ought to be able to say Merry Christmas or excuse my joy or something. And I'm just going, I'm just going to try to observe Christmas, okay? Are you with me? I'm just going to try to observe Christmas. I, I don't know. Maybe you ought to just get an a, a erasable marker and write on the side of your windows of your cars something about uh, Merry Christmas or something like that and just drive wherever you want to. Just go wherever you want to. And if it rains it off, just write it back on there and, 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 and go again and once in a while roll down your window and say, go tell it on the mountain and say it right out loud. And back to Bethlehem. This ought to be the most joyous time of the year, don't you think? This ought to be a happy time, and, 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 and it still can be if we don't let that bother us too much, and it will be if we let it. it it's not really, friends, about gifts and trees and decorations. 
that's not what the season's about. It's it, and and don't don't be offended. It's not about families and parties and fun, although that's a wonderful part of how we observe Christmas. But it's not about Santa Claus or snowman or reindeer. It's about Jesus. That's what Christmas is. And these other things just go along with it and are okay. But I want us to go back to Bethlehem. That's where it all started. And, and let's notice that what happened when the greatest event in all history to that time occurred in a manger, <laughs> in, in a stable, and a babe was laid in a manger a long time ago. I want to, make, I want to try to make three brief points, and I'll not be very long. One, there was a heavenly choir that pro proclaimed a message of peace. What did the angels say to the shepherd? They said, don't be scared. Be not afraid. Fear not. Fear not. What a wonderful, encouraging message. We need to be told from time to time, fear not. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of death or don't be afraid of hell or Satan or life or, or don't be afraid of anything because there is born and laid in a manger a special little baby. Don't be afraid. They said rejoice, be happy in this good news. Because he has finally come, the Messiah that we, the children of Israel, have been looking for all these years. He has come, and let's rejoice in that. Because he is Christ. He is the anointed one. He is the prophesied one. He is the Lord. And he's now in Bethlehem. And you all can go see him. Leave your sheep a little while and go see him. You know, our, our greatest need was not for information or technology or money or pleasure or dare I say this justice our greatest need was not for that it was for forgiveness and for redemption and Bethlehem made the way for that the shepherds then pointed the way to Jesus it was in Bethlehem where he was the house of bread where God could feed his people <laughs> and the choir praise God number two the shepherds proclaimed a message of peace and of praise they were probably raising sheep for the sacrifices in the temple in Jerusalem Bethlehem's not that far from Jerusalem and the shepherds' fields are still there outside of Bethlehem, a rugged territory, but where they could graze their sheep. And they probably were raising sheep to be offered in sacrifice in the temple. And it's interesting that the shepherds who were doing that were the first ones to meet the Lamb of God. Although he was a little baby, they met him there in Bethlehem. And they followed the message that they received and, and, and they went out and, and they told everybody what they had seen and whom they had seen there in, in Bethlehem, the babe in the manger. But it's interesting to me that those shepherds, after they saw Jesus in a stable lying in a manger, went back to the sheep. Now, think about it. They didn't turn their back on him because they spread the news of him. But their job, their occupation, their circumstances were much the same. But their hearts had changed because they had met the Messiah. So, the angels proclaimed a message of peace and the shepherds proclaimed a message of praise to the little one. And then let's look at one more individual this morning. Let's, let's look at the innkeeper for a little while. We criticize him as being a rascal. May have been, we don't really know that. But 
without trying to, he preached a message of rejection. It was a message of sadness. What was his message? There's no room for you. There's no room for you in the inn that I am managing here. That's the same message that Jesus found when he started his ministry and when he preached, taught, and healed people for three years and a half. That was the message that he got all the time. There's no room for you. But think with me. Think with me for just a minute. Do you have room for him today? Do we? Do we have room for him or do other things crowd him out? If, if, if there's no room for him in our lives, friends, there's no real hope in our lives. We need to make room for him. The innkeeper preached a message of separation. I suspect don't know this. I suspect, though, that he was in his bed when Jesus was in the manger that night. There was separation. And if we, as the world is doing, if we insist on separation from the Lord, we're dis we're deprived of the shepherd's joy and ultimately if we persist in insisting on separation we're deprived of eternal life how many of you knew and remember brother Gary Fry a few of you Gary was our director of the denomination he was the executive director and for a while and pastored around in Missouri for a good while and served on various boards in, in Nashville. And he tells a story that I want to relate to you. I like the story. I've told it different places. It's about a school Christmas pageant. It was a third grade class. And so you can imagine about how that would go. Wally should have been in the fifth grade, but he was still in the third. Kids made fun of him because he was bigger than the rest of them. He, he, he was big and awkward, and, and he was slow. That's why he was still in the third grade. He was slow. And he wanted to be in the pageant, and he wanted really bad to be in the pageant, and most of all, he wanted to be a shepherd and carry one of those crooked sticks we talked about. He wanted to be a shepherd, and he actually, he actually practiced at home. He got his daddy's old worn bathrobe and, and put it on, and he practiced being a shepherd. But the teacher wanted him to be the innkeeper. She said, he's bigger than the rest of them, and he can look tough. And so she made him the innkeeper. <laughs> well, he had two lines, and he practiced. He didn't get to be a shepherd, but he was going to make the best of it. So he practiced his two lines, and, and the teachers thought that Wally might accidentally make it through. So the day came for the pageant and the kids went home from school that day and waited until the time came and mom and dad got ready and they all came back to school and they had the pageant. Started out pretty well. As Brother Gary told it, started out pretty well <laughs> as a third grade pageant would go. Up until Mary and Joseph came to the inn and Wally told them he didn't have any room for them. And he was pretty gruff, they said. And Joseph pleaded for his wife who very obviously was going to have a baby. But Wally, Wally stayed with his part and he began to, to give his second speech but he just couldn't do it. 
he just couldn't say what he was supposed to say because he was supposed to be stern with Joseph and Mary and say, be gone. In other words, get out of here. I don't have room for you. Go away. Be gone. Teacher was sitting behind the curtains on a tall stool, kind of, kind of like that, Brother Dwayne. And, and she had all the, the, what do you call it, the manuscript, and, and she was following along so she could prompt any of the kids that needed it. And she whispered, be gone. And Wally heard it, but he still couldn't say it. And the teacher whispered again. And it was one of those whispers that everybody in the audience could hear. Be gone. And Wally tried his best and told Joseph and Mary, be gone. And little Joseph and Mary, the little third graders, turned and started walking down the aisle of the church, leaving the inn to go look somewhere else for a place to spend the night. And their heads were bowed, but they were bowed way down, and they saw nothing but the floor as they walked away, and they looked sad. And Wally went back through the door on the stage, but he didn't shut the door like he was supposed to, and he watched Joseph and Mary going away. And then he stepped back out onto the stage. Have you heard the story? He stepped back out onto the stage, and to the horror of the teacher, he did something that changed little Christmas pageants forever. He said, Hey, you guys, wait, wait, you can have my room. <coughs> my room. My room. That secret place way down in my heart. That, that special place. You can, you can have that. Or, or my room at home, or my entire home. <clears throat> All that happens there. All of these should be inhabited by Jesus. All of them. And not just at Christmas time. Not that. Not at just at this special time of year, certainly at Christmas time, certainly at this special time of year. Our room, our room should be a welcome place for the babe of Bethlehem. And if the world doesn't like it, if this pagan, backslidden, sin-filled world doesn't like it, friends, let's welcome Jesus anyway. And let's proclaim his presence in our lives and in our hearts and in our homes and in our society. And let's let our light shine with the Christmas lights that are all around us. And let's proclaim the good news that, that, that Jesus has come and that there has been born unto us a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And let's proclaim that we rejoice at this good news with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Would you stand, please? Take your book and turn to page 279. Brother Lee's asked us to close with this this morning. 279, Joy to the World. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. 
Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains, repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders and wonders of his love can you say amen anything else that needs to be said this morning that's right. That's how I was going to have you dismiss. So uh, we'll resume our regular schedule next Sunday. No services tonight. Do turn to somebody and tell them Merry Christmas and have a great day. And we love you. God bless you.